1976, this was the cutting edge of racing. It's called Night Driver, and it's believed to be one of the first first-person racing games ever made. What's ironic about this game is that it's set at night not because it's fun, but because it was easy to make. There is only one object here for the game code to worry about. One single white block that is duplicated and scaled to make it look like you're speeding down a road with a scenery hidden in darkness. If you wanted to make a first person driving game quickly and with limited power, you made Night Driver. Today however, times have changed. If you want to make a racing game the easy way now, you set it in broad daylight. Pin the sun to a fixed position in the sky and fake every single shadow, because they won't move if the sun doesn't. The cars don't even need working headlights, because what's the point of that? Dim the sun and bring up the moon though, the rules change. Four decades after Atari floored the arcades with scaling white blocks on a black background, what does it take to wow the modern racer heading into the darkness? Let's find out. This is a Seto Corsa Competizione and I've got to say this is a great start. At first glance this could even be real. The lights are beaming, making the cars in front cast realistic shadows across the scenery. You have the brake lights bouncing off the track and even the stars are faintly out in the sky if you squint hard enough. Then as we cross the top of the mountain there's even the lights of the city off in the distance. All in all it's beautiful. The only thing letting us know this is a game is the strange blue glow over the cockpit. Sure there's a blue light in the car but it just doesn't look right. To dig any deeper though, we need to step outside. It's only now that the illusion begins to fall apart. From this overhead perspective it's clear that while our car has working headlights, nobody else does. Every other car just has a bright patch pushed along in front of them that lights up the road but not the scenery. We are headed into a dark void that should be lit up like a Christmas tree. Then if we take a step further back to a TV shot, even our own car loses its realistic headlights in some of the shots. The dirty lens effect though, there's a nice touch. Just don't think about the fact that all of the cameras all around the track have the same identical dirt somehow. Ignore that and get distracted by the glowing brake discs, the sparks and the glowing exhausts. If there is one question I want to ask of any game, it's this. If I do stupid things, will the game let me win stupid prizes? Crashing into the wall at Bathurst is a pretty stupid thing to do. And there's my stupid prize, the headlights are toast. Though why the cracks on the windshield are glowing now I don't know. And I might be able to make it around the track if not for that. As you can see, in the rear view, it's just fine. That's the benchmark then, ACC. Gorgeous in car with some nice touches out of the car too. Let's see what its great sim rival iRacing can muster. Coming straight off the back of ACC you can't help but be a little bit disappointed. But let's start with the positives. We can see all the way down the straight here because every car seems to have its own working lights that actually light up the surroundings. That's more than we could say for ACC. Unfortunately for iRacing, that's the only positive I can find. The lighting looks very flat and doesn't interact with trackside objects very well. They are either lit or they're in shadow, there isn't much in between. Bounce lighting isn't something iRacing is particularly concerned about. This is clear on all external shots where objects not caught in the headlights are cast into a dark void. And remember the distant views of the city we saw in ACC? You're just not getting that here. To make matters worse, the cars aren't even visually stable. If you get bored down the straight you can keep yourself amused by watching the car pop from one lighting model to the next. It's quite something. But this is eye racing we're talking about. It's not about pretty graphics, it's about realism right? So when we plow head first into a barrier, you know it's going to take out the headlights and it's going to be game over. Or maybe not. But hey, we have glowing nuclear grass. There's something no other game has. By this point I know some of you are angrily typing away in the comments about how Bathurst isn't an eye track, even though you pay full price for it. It doesn't have the lighting model and you should have tested on a track with the new updated lighting model. Yeah, okay sure, but Bathurst in real life doesn't have lights all around the track, so that's fair. But to be even more fair... Here is Daytona. Is that better? This track was built with the full lighting and honestly, I cannot see where the work went. It's just the same lighting with some lamps here and there. What's the point of night racing when it's so bright you don't even need the lights? As if to answer that question, this is F1 2021. That pinnacle of holding night races so bright, you may as well be racing in the day. Wait, did I say F1 2021? <laughs> I've got to stop living in the past. This is F1 2022 and as you can see... Uh, 
This is F1 2022 and... This... Maybe this time? This is F1 2021. I can't tell the difference between this game and the latest one anyway. Technically, this is night racing. And I get why the track is so bright. F1 cars don't actually have lights after all. But visually, this is boring. There are some shiny reflections on the car and occasionally you might see a spark if you were lucky. But otherwise, it's just too bright. Outside, things are a little bit better. More sparks, glowing disc brakes, even a heat haze. But the only concession to this actually being a nighttime race are the constantly shifting shadows under the car as it darts around the track. There are no stars to see here, no shining city lights in the distance, just the grey void. Back at Bathurst again now and this is Project Cars 2. For an old game it's looking pretty good. Sure, the sparkly bits shining off the wings don't look too convincing, but that yellow glare coming in from behind is something that we haven't seen thus far. Not even ACC recognize the existence of different colored headlights, but we have them right here. Heading up the mountain and the stars around the sky, the trackside detail is nicely lit for the most part, not too bright and there aren't that many unnatural black voids. We can even see our own car cast shadows on the walls from the lights of the cars behind. In chase view, the trackside detail is less convincing. There is grassland or there is black and not much in between. But the view of the stars is cool. And in this view, you can really appreciate how the headlights of the cars light up the track ahead. Stepping back again to a replay view and the headlights become less impressive. This view highlights exactly how all cars have identically shaped headlights with the same cone of light pushing ahead of each car. Even if it looks like each car has differently arranged headlights. But what happens if we turn our headlights off altogether? Like the guy behind? Well, there's a switch to do that. Or there's the wall. With our lights totally smashed out, the track does start to look a bit weird. We can tell that every light is just a spotlight with zero bounce lighting and just where is most of this light coming from anyway? It seems to just simply exist. This is a point where most gamers hit the restart button anyway, but it's still cool that we are allowed to do this. It would just be even cooler if it looked realistic while doing so. It's a good effort, but let's see what the sequel to this game did with its years of extra development. This is Project Cars 3 and damn it's bright. At first glance I would say this is a game we just saw, except that the intern has been messing with the contrast setting. That sky is F1 bright, but at least in those games they have the excuse of a billion blazing light towers lighting up the night sky. This track is meant to be in the middle of nowhere Australia. Why is the sky glowing? and those stars. There is something about them that looks odd, just too uniform. Maybe this was an issue in the previous games also, but with them being so visible in this game it really stands out. When concentrating on the racing line though it can look kind of cool. Maybe because the ambient light is bright you don't get the feeling that the background isn't always blending properly. It looks a bit more natural, at least in terms of brightness, and the level of detail around the track is excellent, if maybe not realistic. It seems they did a great job in keeping all the best elements of the lighting model from the previous game and building upon it. It seems that way. Just don't switch views. I mean, you can jump into the chase view and it's all good. Just like the old game, we have shadows and different colored headlights, even some smoke for your headlights to interact poorly with when you spin going up the mountain. It's the replay view where it all falls apart. This just looks terrible. It's the headlights that kill it. It's not just that they are blurry blobs. It's that they are blurry blobs that float right through other cars and solid objects when they want to. But you can just switch the lights off. Not that it makes much of a difference when everything is this bright. It could be brighter though. Enter race room racing experience and who am I kidding? This is broad daylight. It's hugely disappointing. You imagine that games that exist as services, games that are always online and always under development, would be at the very pinnacle of simulation tech. There is no need to wait for the next game to implement a feature. You build a feature and ship it straight to your consumers. But iRacing in this game are always far behind in terms of graphics engine tech, to the point of iRacing having the most rudimentary night effects, and this game not even having any at all. Maybe it's all down to budget. So let's check out a game from a studio with more raw cash flowing through its veins than it knows what to do with. Forza Horizon 5. Well, this looks like we're staring at the slit of a tank. Can people actually drive like this? What little we can see does look amazing though. 
there is a uh, convincing smoke and dust interacting with the uh, light and you can see each car rocking its own unique headlight setup. Some of them yellow. Even the rear mirror is looking really cool with reflections galore. Jump outside the car and take a look at that sky. It's amazing. Granted, it looks like we have the world's brightest full moon and maybe we can see an unrealistic amount of stars. But does that matter when it looks this good? It's easy to lose hours in this game just cruising around and admiring the scenery. The one huge complaint I have with this game's graphics normally is the draw distance and level of detail pop, but at night, you just don't notice that at all. For a game that gets so many little details right, it gets some big ones really wrong. It soon becomes abundantly clear that your lights are invincible, can't turn them off and can't smash them out. You can destroy just about everything else you see in this game apart from buildings, so why not your car too? But this isn't a review of Forza Horizon 5. There's already one of those on the channel if you want to check it out. For now, let's just say that this game scores high marks for capturing the picture-perfect beauty of night driving, even if it falls short on realism. If you want the best in realism, we can only turn to Art of Rally. Wait, did I say realism? Because to hell with that. This game is as unrealistic as graphics get in this video. But even with some graphical artifacts and headlights that sometimes go through mountains, this still looks incredible. It's everything you would expect from a rally car. The blazing intensity of the lights just ahead of the car that taper off into the dark void. It's just a pity that no amount of crash damage is going to kill your lights. But since it's an arcade blast, I think we can let that slide. Besides, if we want some show-stopping damage, we have other games for that. This is Dirt Rally 2.0 and those are some bright headlights. This actually looks pretty awesome. The first thing that strikes me about this game at night is the exposure. Close up objects get obliterated by the headlights turning into a blur of brightness. That along with the bloom on reflective objects really helps sell the illusion of having blinding rally lights out front. And when you get out of the city into the country the landscape is realistically dark. While the sun hasn't quite exited the picture in some parts of the sky, you do really get the impression of driving into the night. Outside the car we get to see the bloom of the brake lights and the flashes of the spectator cameras along with the really well done exhaust flames from time to time. This game might be old, but it still holds up. Better yet, when you get it all wrong the game's going to punish you for it. What's awesome about this is that it looks fairly realistic. With that level of light coming from the sky and my eyes dark adapted, I am pretty sure that this is about what I'd expect to see in reality. Nice work there Codemasters. But you're not the only kid on the rally block. This is WRC 10 and instantly, things are a bit different. Visually I can't say I like this as much. However, we're dealing with a decades old WRC car here. The lights could be a bit yellow back then. Still, I feel with the cool half a million lights on the front of this thing, the road ahead should be a lot brighter than it is. This is why you're not seeing true in-car footage here. As I touched on in my review of the game, the in-car view in WRC is just too dark. Switch cameras though and like magic, your headlights are better. Well, you can switch your headlights off if you want to. The ambient lighting model isn't great. Even though the sky is glowing, you're not going to see much ahead of you. Maybe it's a good thing that no matter how hard you hit a wall, you're never going to lose your lights. Back to circuit races then, and this is R Factor 2. To be honest, I was surprised this game even had night racing. What isn't surprising though is how basic the lighting model really is. Let's study the cockpit view for a moment. We can see that while cars are behind us, their lights fully illuminate the cockpit, shining through even the driver. Then, when no cars are around us, it's darker than black. As we saw with games like iRacing, there is little in the way of bounced lighting. The light from the headlights lights up the road ahead, but none of that light bounces around and lights up anything else. At the very least, that bright dash display should be lighting up the cockpit just a little, but it has no effect. It's not all bad though. I absolutely love the reflective track markings and safety jackets of the marshals. This needs to be a staple of all racing games. And the lights on the cars when viewed from outside have a nice subtle bloom. If you catch R Factor 2 at just the right moment, it can look quite good. But only for a moment. There are too many shortcuts taken here for the game to look spectacular. As much as things like their nuclear green flags might look cool when you approach, they look pretty stupid when you realize they are still glowing when you have passed them and everything else is in darkness. It's a stronger effort than I expected though. The bloom and reflective effects almost look HDR. But if we really want to see a dev team push the boat out with effects, we need to go to the arcade. This is Grid Legends and I have to say I don't think I've ever seen more trackside detail or sheer volume of stuff happening off the track than I'm seeing here. 
One single corner into the lap sees confetti, flashing lights, balloons, sparks coming off the cars, volumetric dust and spectacular fireworks. That still leaves the glow sticks and whatever other craziness is happening around the track. If you're a graphics programmer and this game is on your CV then can we swap incomes? Because I think you're making a lot more than I am. There is no doubt that this looks spectacular, but this is a night video. When it's so bright you can't even tell if your headlights are on, does that even count as a night race? I'm gonna say not really, but that's okay. The physics are pure arcade, so why not have some pure arcade night too? Back to the dry realism of Project Cars 2 then. No, wait, we did that one. I think this is Automobilista 2, though there's just no way to be sure. Nah, to be fair, there are some differences between this game and Project Cars 2, just not many of them. The all important lighting model is basically the same with all the same praises and criticisms. The headlight effect is convincing enough, but again it's the bounce lighting that is lacking. The major point of difference here is the city of Bathurst that is largely absent on Project Cars 2, but can be glimpsed occasionally in Automobilista 2. Is that a win over its twin? Maybe. But let's stop messing about, here is the granddaddy of spectacular graphics, Gran Turismo 7. Instantly off the line we can already see something new, glare coming off the rearview mirror from the car behind. That's a nice touch, but it isn't all. For the first time we are seeing light from cars behind accurately hit exposed parts of the cockpit like the top roll bar and not lighting up the whole thing. You would not think this would be so difficult to achieve, but here we are. Heading up the mountain, what stands out the most aside from the glare in our mirrors are the shadows. You can even see the wings of the cars outlined on the trees. That's if you're not looking at the beautiful sky or the floodlights peeking through the tree branches. Coming down the back straight, it's the city of Bathurst that grabs the attention with its masses of orange streetlights filling your periphery. From the chase cam, it's clearly the sky that steals the show. So many varied stars that aren't just white dots. If you look closely, they twinkle and display red and blue shift. The flames belching out the AMG GT3 also deserve a mention. Not because they are dramatically better than in other games, but because they are varied. Each spit of flame can be different, some big, some small, each a different size. It's all about the little details. It's not all roses though. Those detailed car shutters we mentioned, while they might be accurately reflecting the shape of the car instead of a blob, they are very low resolution and well behind those seen in ACC. Not only that, those shadows often shouldn't be there at all. Take that beetle in front, it's got a nice shadow, but should we be able to see that shadow when the beetle itself has headlights? No. It's one of the many concessions to GPU speed that we see, and if you look into the rearview mirror, sure there are a ton of cars with lights rendered in there, but those lights aren't lighting up the track until they get close. In GT7 your car has working headlights, but for opponent cars, all bets are off. And don't even think about running dark. While GT7 gives you a light switch, it only flashes the lights, you can't turn them off. And don't think you can just smash them off either, that doesn't work no matter how much fun it is trying. Which leaves us with no perfect night racer. Sure we have seen some impressive sights from ACC to Forza Horizon 5, but not even GT7 can nail it. Everything has its flaws, but we still have one more card to play. This is OG Assetto Corsa, but it's not just Assetto Corsa, it's Assetto Corsa Soul Mod. It's said to be God tier, but we can already see a problem. The same problem that has plagued many games in this list. The headlights of the cars behind shine right through the car and light up the dash. But let's ignore that for now because if we concentrate on what's outside the windshield, it does look pretty fine. Most if not all the cars ahead appear to be projecting their own lights, making an otherwise dark track ahead blaze with light. And the little sparks that appear are nice, if a little unrealistic looking compared to other games. But it's the scenery that sells it for me in this view slowly getting brighter as the car approaches without any of the strange voids that other games suffer from. And when the lights go out, the level of light looks pretty realistic. Those cracks on the windshield though, they just look terrible. Aside from that though, there just isn't much going on. Lights do dance nicely around your car and the brake lights give off some nice bloom. There's even a slight brightening of the sky towards the horizon with a star or two. But we're not seeing anything amazing. There's none of the cool reflective track signs or protective vests found in R Factor 2, a lens flare effect not quite as good as that seen in Project Cars 2, in car lighting not quite as advanced as that in GT7, and headlights that don't convey the sheer intensity of those in ACC. 
So not even Soul Mod can deliver the perfect night racing experience. But what if I had to choose just one game to visually impress with its night experience? Which would it be? I think first I would ask you one question. Are you a Michael Bay fan? If so, then there is no contest. Grid Legends is the best night racing experience you can have and it's not even close. For the rest of us though, it's gotta be ACC. It's missing some effects and the blue glow in the cockpit might make you think you're being abducted by aliens in the middle of the night. But the star of night driving is the headlights and there's just nothing else on the grid that's shining as brightly as ACC.